Biff, how many ninjas does it take to change a light bulb? You're asking a Japanese man, you're, you're giving a Japanese man a ninja joke. Is that what you're really doing? I am indeed. How many ninjas does it take? Whoa, to it's life? changed already. <laughs> it's changed already. Okay. <sighs> I'll, I'll bring it down to, to my level. Um, hey, what kind of bees make milk, Biff? My God, I can't wait to hear what kind of beads uh, make milk, Jock. Boobies. <laughs> Boobies make milk. And with that, I welcome all to Carnival Personnel. Hello, Biff. How are you? Uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm hanging in there. Uh, how about you, Jock? Well, you know what? I, I, I'm going to get right to it. Biff, do you think it's your selfish, irresponsible lifestyle that led to you getting COVID? A hundred percent. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's all those orgies that I attend on a regular basis. And, you know, <laughs> you know, we, we might be protected down there, but you know, our mouths are wide open because, you know, you have to make use of that stuff. You know, me, me, I'm just a victim of circumstance, you know, but everybody yeah. else has gotten COVID. It's just irresponsible. To it. No. So Biff, what, you, you, you posed, you posed changing the name of the podcast. What, what <laughs> yeah, the COVID personnel. <laughs> Absolutely. I, yeah, we're, we're the positive brothers. So right, right out of the gate. Um, and it sounds like a country song. Uh, I was on the way to my uncle's funeral last thursday okay. um you know i i i a loss from my mom and right. her sister who she one of her sisters was very close we haven't been close to this uncle in, in a good decade a lot of a lot of a lot of drama but anyways on his way to the funeral i kind of didn't want to go but i kind of didn't want to get out of going by getting a phone call from my school that my oldest son who fully vaccinated double mask wearing He's the one the last two years we both we've most been worried about catching it because he yeah, has yeah. some yeah. autoimmune stuff. But the school yeah. called and said, Hey, he just tested positive. Come get him. So I had to yeah. you know call my mom yep. and say, Hey, I'm not coming to Uncle Bud's uh dirt nap party. I uh have to turn around. I was like halfway to Boston where he was the service was just outside right. Boston. Yeah. And and so I get back and they're like, Oh, we're gonna send, you know, your your little guy to who's One's in the fifth grade, one's in the seventh. And I'm like, oh, did he test positive too? They're like, oh, we didn't test him. And I'm looking at him like, why the fuck wouldn't you test him? You know? <laughs> like they both are signed up to do the pool testing at which, you know, only 25% of their school has signed up for it. So they're like, oh yeah, we can test him now if you want to wait. I'm like, yeah, I'll wait. So I sent, I sent the oldest kid out to the car uh -huh. and, um, and, you know, they tested the little one. They're like, oh, okay, well, we'll call you in about 15 minutes. You know, so, you know, I had to take him home anyways. And th so that was Thursday. The little one tested negative, but instantly uh, the oldest one and I, you know, moved into the basement and sure enough, uh, a couple of days, you know, it, well, it's, you know, I had tested, I had just got tested the day before anyways, but I didn't get my results till later that evening. So I picked him right. up at school around noon. I got my test at like eight o'clock, which is like 36 hours after I yeah. took it. And I was positive as well. So, you know, when and we talked about the last podcast, you know, right after winter break, we didn't send it back the first week knowing it was going to be a hellscape, a, a, a Petri dish of learning. Right, right, right. But he he is now one of the 20 percent of the entire school population, teachers, bus drivers, lunch ladies, right. administration. But 20 percent since winter break have tested positive. Oh, my God. I, I, I don't know the percentage of he had one really rough 24 hour day and then one kind of not great, but not like the first day he got tested like his fever would spike up to like 104, 105 a couple of times, but, and we called the doctor and they're like, no, you know, if, if it's high for a couple hours, bring him in, but right, you know, right. toggle between this and this. And yep. so, he, you know, and I felt so bad for him because, you know, he had like three blankets on in the space heater. We have a guest room and he's freezing at the same time, burning up. Oh, you know, that's horrible. That's horrible. 
And, yeah. and, and what I always expected what would happen. And the reason I wear a mask and the reason I get tested is because as much as I'm a douchebag, I'm not a selfish prick douchebag. I don't get sick. And so I'm the, I'm the asshole who has it, walks around with it and transmits it without knowing it. So I know right, that's right, how, yeah. that's how my body yeah. is. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm staying away from you people for you. I'm wearing a mask for, 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 right. you know, you, you know, it was last week I'm on the Stairmaster and there's, they have a rule at the gym. Like, you know, you can't be a machine next to somebody and a dude gets right on next to me. And I'm like, you know, I put on my mask, you know, I, I, I you know, I, 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 I hit the next like five minute mark of it, but you know, and I, I walked away and again, you know, I didn't do it for me. It's like, he's kind of the pricks, you know, take the machine next to me. He shouldn't, but at the yeah. same time, I, I'm, I'm like, yeah. So now, well, you know, to be, to be fair though, I mean, like, you know, were you there like looking sexy and all that stuff? And maybe, it's you true. know, I was, was putting to, the vibe know, out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, but you know, that you know? black sexy Batman shirt that I have, not sure, that yeah, one, yeah. the other Batman shirt. Yeah. I had that on. Was, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. And, yeah is, so, is that the one with the Batman logo or is it the, yes. is the one with the Batman logo? Yes. Or maybe it's, it's the one with the Batman logo. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so I tell, I tell the hockey guys, I, I tweet you yep. or text you, you know, you know, Johnny yeah. and all-star and Joe. And I, that yeah. was Thursday. And then when did you, when did you get your news? So um, I got mine on Tuesday morning. So essentially that was, um, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so with me, uh, the week before uh, MLK day, you know, we had our stepson over. Um, and he is unvaxxed. He refuses to get vaxxed. Uh, and, you know, sadly, his son is also unvaxxed. And they kind of came in kind of sick and, um, you know, sneezing all over the place. Uh, we had him take our home test and he tested negative. And then um, James was feeling kind of, you know, uh, eh. so on that Thursday prior or yeah, that Thursday prior to uh, MLK, he went in to get himself tested. And he got his uh, results uh, over the weekend, like the day before MLK, um, uh, and he was negative. But right around that time, over that weekend, I started feeling kind of, you know, just, you know, I was fatigued throughout the whole weekend. And But I've been kind of tired because of work anyway. So I thought, well, you know what? I got some coughs. I got some whatever. But on Tuesday, uh, when the, uh, the county testing center opened, I went to get myself tested. And then the following morning, it's like four in the morning. It's like, who the, you know, who calls, you know, who sends a text at four in the morning is, oh, it's my results are back. And sure enough, on Wednesday morning, I got, so I got tested on last week, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning, I found out I was positive. Uh, subsequently, I had um, uh, both Lori and James retest and, um, well, Lori's first test and James retest. Uh, James still negative, but Lori tested positive also. So there you go. It's just, and it's what, what is the worst part about getting COVID with, what would you say for you, the worst part was getting this? I, I mean, the worst part is that I'm basically stuck in the house, but you know, because of, you know, like my symptoms are fine, but I mean, that, that's, that's, I mean, so here it's kind of weird. And I think I've read this elsewhere, but there is, um, because I'm not dying, there is this, um, for lack of better term, uh, a sense of relief where I don't have the, what if I get COVID anxiety, I guess. So I, I wasn't one of those people who went in with, you know, who went around with this confidence that, yeah, if I get COVID, I'm just, you know, it's just going to be mild. But if I, I, you know, it's like one of those things, you know, yeah, if I get COVID, I might die. So, uh, and so it's one of those things where I got it and it's been mild and uh, I didn't die so far. And so, in that sense, I, I feel like, okay, so it's a combination of relief and combination com and just a reinforced sense of confidence in the whole vaccine booster stuff. So, yeah. The worst part for me getting it is that it has robbed me from the ability of looking down at people who've gotten it. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the saddest thing for me <clears throat> is the fact yeah. that. I can't be the same arrogant, superior. Look at me being better than you fucks who got it because I've been safer kind of routine. So it's, uh, you know. it's kind of burst at my little, um, but now, you know, and 
I mean, you're, um, sadly, you're not in a situation where you could, you know, outright avoid it, right? Because you have two kids going to school. I mean, and unless, you know, the your area is dedicated to 100% remote, which no place is right now, right? So, I mean, how do you avoid that? I mean, how do you avoid exposure of your, you know, your close family, right? I mean, you're you know, in the, that the, the worst part about, like, not being remote is, and I think we talked about this on the last recording. I think it happened before the last recording. We had a sub-zero day, yeah, and they canceled school because it's too cold, right? And, and of course, you know, people like my mom were the first to say, "Oh, kids are, you know, they're too soft." I'm like, "Mom, there are kids in this town who have to walk a mile, and it's sub-zero. It, it's like truly, it's unhealthy and unsafe. Like 15 minutes outside in this, you know, you're going to get frostbite and die. You know what I mean? It's like the the buses. Not every kid, parent." can drive them to school like our our kids or not every you know lots of times you see at the bus stops kids waiting in their parents car if the parents can do that but anyways so so but the sad thing is because our our governor has not there's no remote learning under no circumstances will the state recognize remote learning and yep. so even though my 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 you know the little guy who didn't get covid um he stayed home the rest of that week but went in tuesday because monday was okay. mlk day yep. um but his brother had to stay home for six days and and he was able to stay you know current on his google classroom stuff but he still counted as like six absences but in that snow day or that cold day instead of them saying yeah you know what we're all going to do remote learning today that day has to be made up in june now so, which is so ridiculous it's like every kid in the town has a hotspot and has a chromebook and you know it, it was i'd say it was a success i mean you know so it's just ridiculous that there's this zero support for remote is, learning well, more um, but for that for that uh for that particular scenario is there like a, a, a logistical issue also from the standpoint of since the teachers aren't prepared for uh are, are expecting to have in you know in class like if they have kids now their kids are home and like they can't tend to their own kids and teach a class at the same time. Yeah, there, but 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 I, I mean, that involved or yeah, no, no, I they 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 just think it's not real learning, you know, because yeah, everybody's okay. life is turned upside down when it snows. Oh, so yeah. you know, you can't really plan for it, but you kind of can. You know, you should you should know. You know, one of the little guys went to a different school three years ago. And at the beginning of the school year, okay. they get this is pre pandemic. This is way back in 2019. Um, they they start the school year by giving kids five blizzard bags. And so and each blizzard bag is if you had a snowstorm, here's the work that you will do that day. Turn it in. And at Christmas okay. break, they gave you five more for, you know, that would keep current with that that semesters like learning right and stuff like yep. That. Yep. And so instead of oh we have the snow day we're going to miss two days and and you know late december early january or early january early february we're going to have to make them up in june it's like here's all the work that's expected so they could do something like that <clears throat> anyways yeah so, so covid has hit carnival personnel um there, there's 2.5 hosts and so far you know joe it has not gotten <laughs> it yet. Um, yeah. You know, but again, you, you, you're vaccinated, boosted. I'm vaccinated, boosted. My little yeah. guy, you know, has his, you know, he's full as fully vaccinated as you can be. They don't have boosters for 14 year olds yet. And yet. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. It's like he had a rough, rough 36 hours. Yeah. And, and we just yeah. think, think, you know, thank God he, he got it. But, you know, he got his shots because how bad would this be? I, you know, I, I don't expect it to be. Um, what's that term? meatloaf bad Oof. so so meatloaf you know obese has asthma could have got the vaccine but he thought well two out of three ain't bad yeah 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 no sympathy you took the words right out of my mouth <laughs> i mean do, do, do you have any good meatloaf doing the dirt nap you know? no like he found paradise by the uh, no, death you took lights. the word right out of my. You missed it. You took the word right out of, right out of my mouth. Oh, it was oh, a song right. from the Battle of the Hell album. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, I I stepped all over. You that. suck. I do, <laughs> I do. But uh, yeah, I mean that's one of those cases where if you're if you're in your seventies, 
I mean, seriously, he had everything going against him in his seventies. Overweight. Well, no, he, had, he had one thing going for him, which was he probably hit was well off financially. That's the thing that you know that because that that is also kind of a a, a breaker in terms of in this country, right? Being able to have access to healthcare is somewhat tied to your, you know, to your wealth and so on, right? But, I, and to be fair, I think he had got lost a lot of weight compared to, you know, the, uh, let's say, Rocky Horror era meatloaf. Oh, okay. You know, so, but still, listen, I mean, bottom line is he went around, I guess he, I think he recently got into it online, on social media in regards to vaccine mandates. And I thought it had to do with Australia, or maybe it was the Australian Open. He got into yeah, the, yeah. Like, a debate over that and so like listen i mean if you if you're not vaccinated you know regardless of your asian health condition or whatever if you don't get the vaccine and essentially the guidance out there is that hey statistically this is how it looks versus you know vaccine versus non-vaccine vaccine's free and you don't get it and you know even if it wasn't free the dude could definitely afford it you know what can i say i mean you you reap what you sow so I have no sympathy. I have no sympathy for that. Um, but I do have sympathy. So, you know, yeah. So COVID's still here. Oh, but we had to push back this recording because you uh, you got a contract case and call. Tell me about that. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. Well, so um, literally five minutes before the scheduled time, um, you know, I get the call. And I expected the call to come in. I just didn't expect it today because I thought maybe they're not working on, you know, weekends, but whatever. But, and uh, I was pre-warned I got a notification from the uh, the county indicating that because I tested positive, um, you know. Uh, so yeah, so we'll, you know we'll and it was oh, gosh, it took about maybe twenty five minutes, almost thirty minutes, and part of it was that the, you know, obviously getting help I hear these days is pretty tough. So there were portions where like, um, you know, it was. Uh, hard for me to explain to her what seemed to be an uh, seemed to be obvious answers and stuff like that so and the the other funny thing is is that as i was um you know from my last name it's easy to decipher that i'm probably asian but then one of the questions that they ask is about the other people in your household and so so i you know i start you know basically naming my uh everybody in the house and then so i name my wife and he and he and she goes and her ethnicity is asian and he goes and i go oh no her ethnicity is 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 caucasian it's a, oh he's like oh and, and is that what does that oh mean i yeah. don't know what that means you know um <laughs> so oh, that was kind of funny it is that is i uh i got the day at the, the day after i get tested positive i get a text message saying Uh hey basically here's a link to a website where you can tell us the people you've come into contact with and we can call them for you without saying who it's from like (laughs) you know which i get i get like some people might be pissed and honestly i was going down i was talking to the wife like in the last week before i tested positive I, I didn't see anyone like, like, right. you know, I, yeah, sure. I went to like target once, but like mass, like, you know I mean? It's like, but it's not like Joe came over and watched movies or we went anywhere. I'm like, it is just insane that, you know, I, you know, I, you know, cause I, I do, I work out house, but it, it, it is, it is. What's also sad this week is, uh, you know, more, more, more celebrities and more comics that, you know, yeah, we both like Bob Saget, 65. Uh, yeah, that was sad. That was so sad. I mean, and, and I guess you see the outpouring, I mean, obviously, and Betty White similarly, right. But you see the outpouring of love for this guy where, you know, it's funny because I think America knows there's two Americas that understand Bob Saget, right? There's the people that understand his entire body of work where, you know, he's actually this comic and his comic is like, he, he, he works blue, super he works blue. blue. Yeah. I mean, you know, so, but, be, but he had to make a living. So he did the, you know, the, you know, the, uh, you know, home videos and, you know, the, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the old America's sister. funniest videos. Right, right, right. 
So and he did house. those things because he had to make a living. But you know, we, you know, the rest of us know the stuff that he really did, right? And yet, you know, he, as a person, he really is kind of that 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 sweet guy that was on the sitcom, right? So that that seems to be the indication, you know, everywhere. So that that kind of, you know, you find out like, you know, some people are, yeah. You know, they seem like whatever on TV, but it turns out that they're, you know, absolute, you know, whatever. But this guy just, by all accounts, just seemed like a genuinely nice, caring person. I just, I mean, it's not one of those things where, oh, he'll be missed. I mean, people are writing, you know, like novels on Twitter about how great this guy is. And it's just like, my God, that's, you know, that's just so horrible that, you know, a person that is so, you know. Well, yeah. It's funny because he was a real established comic. Yep. Before he got those things, and then, like you said, he got those things, and then he was doing bigger venues after. In the first couple of years, a lot of people came to see the sweet dad from, yeah, you know, I've listened to a couple of podcasts and watched a couple of shows <clears throat> in the last week. Like, you know, he did this great thing with Gilbert Gottfried a couple of yeah. years ago because they're, yeah. and the thing is, he's real friends with these people. Like, yeah. and every one of them who talks about him talks about how giving he was like professionally and opening doors for other people and making opportunities and really work. Yeah. At the same time, it's really funny because him and Gilbert were talking about, you know, uh, a number of times Bob Saget had crossed paths with one Mr. Bill Cosby, who was always telling him to, you know, clean up his act. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I yeah, there's so, there's so many, con you know, like, you know, Jim Jeffries, you know, has this great routine about, his uh his yeah you know his uh his shows have been protested because some of the things he's the rape jokes he's made he's like you know and i remember him saying like i joke a lot about rape i do it very little in my pro <laughs> and he's like you know who's never had his show protested because of his content bill cosby <laughs> so, but yeah so bob saget is this ruthless absolute beyond blue just says the most horrific yeah. but it's a yeah. sweet 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 guy like everybody's yeah. worked for him and it's funny because him and gilbert were talking about it and i heard another show where it was one of those things where somebody said oh how awful he was to the olsen twins you know on the set and he's like that's like when social media kind of started and you know and and it, it, it got traction as a real thing and the olsen <laughs> twins are like yeah we never said that like whoever said <laughs> that whether it was you know yeah but but so many he's worked so many years. Yeah, he's he was out there touring. He was literally on tour. Yeah, he was he was in Florida on a tour. He was he literally died in a hotel room in between two shows. Right. And and it and yeah. and, you know, it's just a way we're all wired now. Like we've been waiting for was it drugs? Was it alcohol? Did he OD? But it seemed like just a good old everyday heart attack. I mean, listen, ultimately, like the. <laughs> And I guess I don't understand the that whole obsession over you know you know you know unless it's one of those situations where uh, you know a person had a lifetime of battling you know things and you know so maybe it becomes pertinent then but ultimately like you know how they died is kind of like there are some cases where obviously it matters and maybe it matters a lot but yeah just the obsession with it is yeah that's just you know like why what's what's what, what's with the obsession over how they died and uh an another another you know uh you know I, I almost said big comic and that and that that would have been rude or or mean but uh louis anderson passed this week too as well yeah yeah um yeah i mean you know and i think he i I watched a couple of episodes where I think he was like uh, like a clown's mom or something like that. Is that oh, right? Like, G uh, Zach Galifianakis had a show. Right? I think it ran like three seasons called right? Baskets. Okay. He, yeah. He okay. Played his and mother. That was the one. Yeah. 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 And it's I saw you know it was kind of a bit much for me, so I like I stopped watching it. But you know, obviously that was I I, I remember that being you know him, him getting a lot of uh you know high uh, praise for that show, but. Yeah, no, it, 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 that's, I mean, I, he, I wasn't like, a, and again, it's hard not to say big fan. I'm not making fun of his way, but yeah, no, he was always, you know, a, a pretty good, you know. I like the stand up. Yeah, definitely. So, so yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Been, it's been a rough spell for the, yeah. these comic people we like. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I don't know what the heck. Um, so is that? Are you saying that maybe we should start being uh, Joe Rogan fans or something like that? Is, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Did I say that out loud? No, like I'm like sorry. Joe Joe Rogan for sure. Joe Rogan. Yeah, you know that. I, I've been giving Tucker Carlson a little bit more time lately, and you know, you know he's he's so funny. So I'm a funny. huge fan. Oh, huge, huge. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, on on a happier note. Um, <laughs> speaking of all these dead people, uh, finally got around to seeing Ghostbusters Afterlife. Oh, okay, that's the one with the uh, what's his face? Not Bradley Cooper. No, is it Paul Rudd? Paul Rudd. Yeah. Paul Rudd. Uh, so, Joe, I I. I I, I think Gunda is head. I think he's going to say Ghostbusters over um, over Back to the Future. But it's wow. truly it's truly wow. tough for him because he lives for both of those. And when this came out, uh, he was, you, you, you know, it, it's tough. It's like, you know, when they re- re- you know, reboot Star Trek or Star Wars after so yeah. many years. I mean, this was what, 20, 30 some years in between, like, you know, um, the, the the Ghostbusters with the people you know based it's based on the Ghostbusters we grew up with, right, um, right. and uh, he was like yeah it hit all the notes he he wouldn't say any he doesn't you know give away any spoilers I will not give any spoilers away but totally it was everything I would have wanted in this it it truly was funny and I I would know, I would say that I would say that you're exaggerating there because I'll bet you that you saw no booze. Um, you know what? I, so I think it was, was no missing boobs, the boobs, and so there I was no was, Batman. So it was missing the boobs, but other otherwise, no boobs, you know, for you, and no for Batman. You. Okay, yeah, for you, yeah, okay. You know, uh, because the family rules, the movie can't be a ten unless Batman's in it. Like so, even Endgame, my favorite movie of all time, it's a nine point nine. There's a lot of boobs in it. There are. <laughs> there, there, uh, if so, there's a lot of boobs, can it get a ten? Even with the, if there's no Batman. Like a lot of boobs. You know what? I, I, I you, you make, you make a persuasive argument, but no, it was great. It, you know, it, it lived up to everything Joe wanted, and that's yeah. all I needed to know. And 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 it's true. Yeah. It's like well, that's cool. You know, the misses our little guy, and and I watched it, and you know, uh, yeah, okay, a couple times is that, I had. Is that, out, is that out on streaming or is it out in the theater? It's no, it, it's in streaming. I, I'm trying it's to think what okay. platform we saw it on. Yeah, yeah. but um. Uh, but yeah, no, it was it was it li- it lift up, you know, um, and you know, so in quarantine with my little guy for a week, yeah. uh, which I hate to say, you know, it's always awful when I say this, but we had a really great time. It was, you know, I mean, it's yeah. one of those moments where, you know, it was the two of us. We played Stratego. It's like my favorite board game, and you know, he was bored enough where he would put down the controller and and actually do that. Um, you know, he's so much more agreeable when he's sick, <laughs> you know, it's like, but it uh, was, I see. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But, but, um, but in that time, uh, you know, we've discovered that, uh, that I feel seen Biff, I feel seen that my people have spoken okay. and that the, the words that my people have said have been heard and the KFC Taco Bell down the street for us now has the beyond meat, um, chicken patties okay uh and it, it is i never i'm almost tearing up saying this i never thought i'd see the day that kentucky fried chicken kfc would have a beyond meat option uh that is great and and then and this week as well i saw and, and when i told management she goes oh i thought i told you that yeah they've had it for a while chipotle also has plant-based meat items you know i i I'm stunned that surprised and, and, and delighted that, you know, more, more fast food places have stuff that, you know, my, my kids and I can eat because it's either vegetarian or vegan. So I, and, and highly recommend it. It's, it's, I think, I think it's Del Taco out your way yeah, has yeah. impossible meat, which is okay, but it's, 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 it's maybe, maybe a little better than Morningstar, but the beyond meat is great. So I feel well, here, here's here's my perspective on this. You, you, you know, like I, now while I do eat meat, you know, I eat vegetables. Why can't you just eat vegetables? Um, I don't like them. Why can't you just eat vegetables? I've tried you know? and uh, well, I eat some. I just don't like a lot of the standard ones, you know, so. 
a lot of the standard ones. Well, I don't know the right way to say it. Like, you know, I'm not a big green vegetable guy. Okay. If, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What the hell is that? Holy cow. Anyways, um, yeah, so we um we, we feel seen, we're very happy. It is uh the, the day and age of uh vegetarianism has hit the main I, I, yeah I, I i am i am all for you know I, and you know even though i'm not a vegetarian i am all for the vegetarian lifestyle and reduction of you know meat intake and all of that stuff even though i probably will never give up meat but i i think i am 100 percent behind it for all of the various reasons that i'm not going to get into in regards to health and environment and everything else but why can't you just freaking eat the vegetables it's expensive too like honestly, like they Beyond, you're paying extra to get extra processed vegetables, or you could just you know eat the vegetables and get the full benefit of the vegetables. Moving on, so I've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Lowell is the most uh, ethnically diverse city in America, and finally, finally, I, I can't believe it's taken this. We we have like a Cambodian community mm -hmm. here that is. The biggest Cambodian community outside Cambodia. I'm dead serious oh, wow. in the world. Uh, big Laotian community, you know, yeah. you know, uh, um, you know, lot, big Brazilian, you know, community and stuff. But yet, is all that the Tom Brady effect? Uh, all the levels of power here, you know, are controlled by guys who look like me and um, or, or women, you know, you know, um, who come from the, uh, you know, the cracker background and it it it. So the women never, that look like I shaved you. Yes, <laughs> it, but it never seems to uh, amaze me. We had a, a meeting with our little guy's school for this one program he's in. There was nine representatives uh, uh, from, from the school system that we were dealing with. All of them white women. Like, like you know, it, it, it was his teachers. <laughs> counselor the therapist the social worker the head of you know all these different people and it was they, they, each and every one of them qualified you know you know trained professionals i'm not saying none of them weren't qualified but the the statistics uh, you know the anomaly the fact that the school he goes to you know identifies like less than 50 percent i you know come from like a fully you know cracker household but yet Every one of the administrators, every one of the teachers, every one of the, you know, and not, it wasn't just his school. This was the, the, you know, the different people from the different departments, you know, and the town education thing. And and seriously, it really struck me really hard. I mean, we, we you know, we had this meeting a couple of days after MLK Day, you know, and, and, and the same the same week that, you know, piece of shit joe manchin keeps the john lewis voting act from happening the fact that the racist won again in washington the racist motherfuckers who are going to ensure that racism is here to stay by changing all the voting laws to keep poor and blacks and minorities from voting the same the same day that that happens on a local level you know it's like here i am in my little town having this meeting for my kids school thing and Every single person on on the call on the Zoom, with the exception of, you know, my wife, full on cracker. Yeah. Can I say? I don't what know. Can I say? Right. I mean, and that that's how deeply it goes. I mean, again, I'm not saying any one of these women work, but that's the, the funny thing. Like, not even like you know, one of the teachers, you know, was even a dude. You know I mean, it was just all. It was like, wait, are we having the Zoom back in like 1948? I mean, it's like, I, I, it is. It, it it it's just a little little head scratching. You know, head scratching the same way that the crime wave in Japan keeps continuing. Yeah. So I think one of the one of the uh, the links uh, did uh, go down, but what, one of them is actually, you know, it's it's a it's a video that I like to call "Fund the Police." So I don't know if you saw either video, I, but well, well, yeah, the first one that you sent, the one that said "Happy New Year, Crime is Back," and then the yeah. link didn't work, but the yeah, fun the police one was. I want to say a payphone was involved, but it didn't look like a payphone. It just looked like a regular phone from yeah. somebody's house in 1970 with the cord and all. Tell me about that. So what what that is is it's just the um, uh, kind of the um, it, it's 
attached to uh in japan they have these uh police boxes for lack of better terms right so these these, these little kind of little shacks where the neighborhood police just hang out so instead of at a precinct right they have these uh plate you know these things just positioned throughout the neighborhood and essentially the police are generally there to help so uh to give you a context of the kind of things that the police do in japan in those uh in these uh shacks is that back in the day one of their i think more most um common tasks were to give directions to people like they kind of you know tell okay. like I, okay. I want to go here here's the address i want to get to how do i get there and the police will guide you to that address like that's the kind of stuff that they do and you know so and if anything happens they're kind of like right there entrenched in the neighborhood but anyway so uh, one, one of the officers was actually out on patrol and then when he came back to the you know to the shack on that little phone thing um uh he found this object kind of like kind of embedded in that thing so uh he first said that he was kind of worried because you know there's been cases of these being you know like you know a booby traps or whatever the case may be but then they get it out and it's like it's one of those containers for like uh these tubs for gum right like those whatever right you know those little yep, yep. tubs right and it was just filled with coins and it ended up being all like you know like you know almost 100 bucks i think like eight, maybe 80 bucks or whatever in coins right and there was a note in there saying please use this uh to to essentially support tr you know traffic safety so it's like yeah like these people are like trying to fund the police so interesting yeah. does yeah is there a denomination of coin in Japan that has a hole in it? Uh, there's two of them. Yeah, there's the uh, five yens and the 50 yens. have. Uh, so it, basically, uh, a yen is roughly a penny. Okay. <clears throat> so the Japanese nickel has a hole and the Japanese 50 cent coin has a nickel. And then the lowest denomination for bills in Japan is a thousand yen. So basically, $10 bill is the lowest bill. So there was a, a kind of the large coin in there was a 500 yen coin. So basically it's like a $5 coin. Interesting. Oh, yeah. cause I, cause they, yeah, they had it all laid out. Like, yeah. And was it panning? I'm like, Oh, that's kind of interesting. I, I don't know if I've seen holes in money before. Uh, have you, uh, have you, any video game news happening in your world? Biff? Uh, no, <laughs> no. I play Mahjong on TV on, on Yahoo Japan again, so I started doing that again, but that's not really of any note. So no. How about you? Any new video games on, on your end? New? No, but in quarantine, I did play more than my fair share of the Resident Evil games almost like across the board. Yeah, you know, I I, I, I like what I like. You know, I don't I have no desire to do those multi, the, you know, the war games like Battlezone or, you know, Overwatch or uh, Fortnite. No, I'm I'm I, I'm happy staying in my Batman, Star Wars, and uh, and Resident Evil, but mostly Resident Evil when it comes to. Yeah, I, I have to, I do have to play. Like I got it, I just haven't played it. Maybe today's a good day for me to play it. Um, one of the challenges I have is on Saturdays, um, James is typically if that's James's um, uh, uh, UFC day, and so. And the uh, PlayStation is plugged up, plugged into the main TV in the living room. So the PlayStation is occupied by the UFC viewing. So today, ah. you know, uh, he'll be uh, he'll be out of the house. So there you go. Good. For, and, and well, you know, and I guess the good thing about, you know, you getting COVID now is at a time when you weren't scheduled to travel. So it's not like you got to miss work or anything. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I haven't been, you know, I've been pretty much full remote. So, yeah, it, it's not going to affect my work as long as I can essentially get up and work. Right. So right. Uh, I've, I've heard like there were people, um, I actually had a meeting where uh, I was, it was a 6 30 a.m. meeting for me. And like it's 10 minutes in, and the person who called the meeting is like late. It's like, what the hell? And then it turns out that uh, the person had slept in because. You know, they've been battling COVID this whole time. And it was like the first night that they were actually able to sleep. And, but, you know, as a byproduct of that, just slept right through the alarm. So, uh, that's, yeah. That's, so now, now on to sports. Um, hey, I, you want to talk about football? Football? No, no. I, I, Are you sure? 
well, you're Patriots. Patriots. Yeah, no, they're they're they're, fra- they're they're fraudulent run of being a legit playoff team came to a crashing end last week, as I expected. Um, no, but you know the highlight for for the sports world, uh, uh, you know, as our reposting of the sideshow yeah. last week. Did you watch the Willie O'Ree um, banner raising? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, that was actually uh, it was kind of kind of annoying. Well, so I watched it on ESPN uh, on ESPN, but I was watching it on the uh, on the app. So and it essentially started before the you know the uh, the Bruins game. And so I was hoping that, oh, so I don't just go straight into the Bruins game after that. But no, it actually, oh, the event has ended. And now I have to go find the Bruins game after that. But uh, yeah, obviously, um, you know, very well done, very nicely done by the Bruins. And, and you know, the Bruins, I think, have been, always been really, really good about, you know, their uh, association with Willie O'Ree. But at the same time, and, you know, I, and I think we've talked about this way back when, I mean, why couldn't the NF, uh, NHL just ride, you know, the, uh, on the coattails of Major League Baseball when they retired Jackie Robinson's number, you know, league-wide, and then kind of just ride that wave into the, that, the season that follows? You know, they could have done, you know, s- you know, something similar. Even if they don't retire his number, you know, league-wide, the Bruins definitely could have retired, his, you know, their number, you know, you know, that year and so on. So, and I think... And I'm not trying to say that all oh, Bruins should have done this as much as I think this is where the league is. I mean, I think this is something that the league could have done in coordination with the Bruins, right? I, I think that, every they're sh- like shockingly late to the dance. And yeah, yeah. Look, the league, no asshole is going to wear 99 anyway, so that's right. safe to retire that. But the fact that league wide 99 is retired, the precedent has been set. You know, you could you could have definitely done that, but it yeah. was nice. I mean, Willie O'Ree did it. You know, he he did his um his speech remotely from his home in San Diego. I wouldn't expect yeah. a eight year old guy to be flying these days, right, right. anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was great. They they brought out you know Anson Carter, you know, yeah. to be one of the people to raise a banner. No, I thought it, I thought it was a nice night. I actually you know watched it yeah. with management, and, and yeah. it was it, it was it was a. It, it was a nice, but it's funny when you said, "Oh, well, you had to go and find the game." So, so I'm, I, I my schedule opened up. You know, I was going to be able to watch from like the end of the second period on of the Capitals Bruins game the other night. Uh-huh. Yep. Well, it's not on Nesson, huh? Oh, you know what? It's an NHL um, Network game, so I go to NHL Network. Yeah, it's no. not on that. No, you know, they used to be carried by this UHF channel for decades and decades, TV 38. So I go to my 38. It does. So I have to text one of my buddies. I'm like, Jackie, what channel is the Bruins on? He goes, oh, fuck them. It's on Hulu. I'm like, yeah, what? And he goes, yeah, it's only on Hulu. So well, I, it's, it, there's the, yeah, it's basically there's some games that are ESPN plus games. And then there are some or ESPN or ESPN plus games. And then there are some games that are going to be the TNT, you know, Hulu games or whatever that, you know, so yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah, there's a lot was, of confusion. Yeah. It was, and it was so luckily yeah. because of handmaid's tale, we have Hulu. You yeah. know? And so, uh, you know, I logged onto that, yeah. but it did. I'm like, Holy crap. It shouldn't be this hard, you know, to, to, fu- to find the game, you know, actually that's, it's kind of funny that you say that because, the like the beat reporters for the various teams will often tweet out hey just a reminder tonight's game is on blah right that that is a common you know and because most of my follows are hockey related anyway i see that a lot so that you know um it's yeah look i'm glad that different platforms are interested in the nhl you know you and i both like the underdog story the the little guy who you know who gets his day and it was really nice to see um, Tom Brady finally got a break. Finally, that guy was able to catch a break. Uh, did you see uh, his NFT company just got a, what was it? I want to say $170 million, like, like you know, launch. You know, and well, it's, it's, it's and nice to see the little guy finally have something go right for well, him. Well, you know, and but the thing is, though, like, the thing with athletes, right? They have only a certain number of time to make their living. And, you know, and after they're done playing, it's like they, you know, they have to find ways to kind of continue to make their, make their living. And and not, you know, not, and, you know, we don't want, you know, Tom to really struggle financially 
after he retires, after he no longer can make money from it, you know, from football, you know, like, like what, what's he going to do? Like his wife is going to support him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Yeah. It's like this. Nice to see the guy finally catch a break, but a friend of mine sent that to me. Um, I, look, I'm not a big basketball guy. The, the, my uh, the most I know about Penny Hardaway were those little Penny commercials. Yeah, those were great. Yeah, back they. Were, but I guess he's a college um, coach for the Memphis Tigers now. You know what? And, I saw that thing. I never watched the. I never watched the video though. Well, it's funny because yeah. last week, Saturday, a couple of weeks ago, Saturday Night Live had had a, a skit, you know, okay. where where you know it's a uh, where the Knicks or one basketball team played another NBA team, and yeah. the the all twelve of the players on the team were out with COVID, as was the coach and the assistant coach and the trainer. So the team had a, but it's you know the joke is it, I, it, that's happened a few times that in football. One team had to play with like 18 of their players in COVID protocol, as well as their coach and their like okay. offensive coordinator. And so this Memphis team had to play with like a third of its roster, but all of its starters, like the day of the game or the day before the game were out. So he's starting four freshmen. Right, right. You know? Okay. And he just, and the, and the reporters were basically like, was your team not ready to play today? Were they not? And he finally snapped. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm very proud of, of everything that, you know, they were able to do out there today. But what the fuck are you talking about? You pieces of shit. You know, it was, it was the, the interview. You kind of want to see a coach just snap. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and rightfully so. I, I, well, I highly suggest Googling that. Oh, yeah. Well, so did you see then, um, did you see the Leon Dreisaitl uh, interview? No. Or the post game. Uh, so this, this was the, this was the, uh, the other, you know, idiot reporter asking dumb questions um, incident on. And it, this was like the primary talk it looked like uh, on hockey Twitter this week where. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay. That you did send it to the guy, the kid from Edmonton. Right, right. Yeah, so Leon Dreisaitl, arguably the second best player in the league. I, I don't think he is, but, you know, the, he's, like, up there. He's, like, super elite, right? And But Edmonton's been losing because, you know, it's a horrible team, and it's a, you know, it's a team sport. And essentially, uh, there's a, a veteran Edmonton beat writer. I mean, he's been covering the Oilers since, the, you know, the dynasty days. Ask the kind of a dumb questions about, you know, you know, you know what what is, like, one thing that, you know, you think you could do to essentially, you know, change this, you know, these losing ways or whatever. And then, you know, the guy is like frustrated. He goes, you know what? We just got to change everything, you know? And, you know, he's clearly frustrated. And like the reporter comes back and says, why are you so pissy? And it's like, it's like, and then it just kind of, you know, went downhill from there. So yeah, another, fu- yeah. Why don't yeah. you tell me you have all the answers? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that when no, he's you're going to write about it anyway, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That was great. Uh, so, so, uh, you know, it's, you're not, you know, you can still work, but essentially your life doesn't change much with COVID. Um, well, I can't leave the house. So I can't even go. I like, I have to send my child grocery shopping. My, and my poor child is like, you know, what the hell is a broccoli crown? It's like, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, a, I'm on it, his side with that one. Uh, but are you catching up on anything other than hockey? Are you watching anything? Uh, I got a couple more episodes of Squid Games, and, and that's oh, about okay. it. Okay, all right. Um, oh, what is it called? What is it called? I, I I promise. I sometimes say, "Oh, I'll tweet it out," but management went online, and you know that game where the the where the shapes the the, the shapes uh, the, the shapes wordle. the shapes are put into the candy, and you got to cut the. You got it like the umbrella, the circle, the triangle, that game that they played in Squid Game. Okay. Do you remember right. that? It's like the second or third episode. It was a big thing. And I guess it's a Korean. It's a, it's a, okay, it's a yeah. little Korean. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're talking about, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, right. the, one they, the, 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 the one where they had to essentially uh, carve out the, you know, the shape. Correct. Of, uh, the, the, right, yeah. Correct. So she bought a kit. And, okay. and they and they've been doing that. They've been making they've been making that. They've done it like three or four times where she oh. makes that candy, and it comes with those things. That, you know the the stamps to put it in there, but it doesn't go all the way through the candy. 
And if the whole thing is getting well, so, but there was no death after the failure by the child or anything like that. So, well, you didn't want to go all serious about no it. comment. <laughs> <laughs> But, 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 uh, you know, there, there might have been a nerve gun placed up to somebody's temple in the past. Uh, oh. No, but that, that, but that was a lot of fun. No, Squid Game's great. I uh, was on a text chain with a few uh, of, of, you know, my closest, dearest friends, uh, in which one of them had suggested a about a 10 year plus, around 10 year old British show called The IT Crowd. Uh, you were on that text and that came from all star. Yeah. Yeah. I I had never heard of it. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'll give it a try. I binged watch it. And I think there's only like, yeah, it has a guy that wasn't, you know, the only movie I could think of him being, in was, I think it was called the watch. I think it's the name of the movie. There was a dude from the watch was in there. I think. Uh, Well, there there was an old, there was an older show, you know, like going back 20 years called the mighty boosh and a couple people associated with the, IT crowd, you know, yeah. we're in that the you know the main guy from the IT crowd, I recognized him right away, and I was like, oh, yeah. what is he? What is he? He was in a Thor movie, you know, yep, yep, uh, play yep. small part in that. It was what a great call that All Star gave. I did. I think there's like six episodes a season. They're a half yeah. hour long. There's only a few seasons, so I, I watched the entire thing in about three days. Right. You know. Yeah. Just, back in the day, I was you know everybody because like, hey, guess what? I'm in the IT industry, so. Yeah, it was kind of the the buzz within my work circles a while back, but yeah, never watched it. So complete lame. British humor. Yeah, you know, very, very, you know, very, very fun, and it's funny, you know. But it was, you know, it, it, you know. So here we make all the recommendations. It was nice to get one uh, that I that I completely dug, completely dug. And uh, last week, the first three episodes of Peacemaker came out on HBO Max. Right, right, right. Yep. It's fucked up. It's great. It's at, John Cena is awesome. I mean, jo- <laughs> it's like, honestly, the things that John Cena will do. Did you see Trainwreck? I did not. He truly, truly put himself out there. I mean, he's not afraid to be the butt of the joke. Well, and I think, you know, like like many of these guys, like, you know, he's a very smart guy, right? In terms of, I mean, he kind of understands the whole you know the the you know the how it works kind of the thing, right? You know he it's it's you know he's not like one thing he's not he is definitely not limited by his own ego, right? So correct, yeah. In that sense, I mean that that's where he you know he really gets it, right? And it's great. It's great when you see somebody like that. And you know he was on, he went on Seth Meyers and Jimmy Fallon this week for two different interviews uh-huh. and the full on costume. Like, nice. you know, full long. And he did that before, like six months ago when he was first promoting it. And, you know, he's he's zooming in to Seth Myers, and Seth Myers was not expecting when when <laughs> when, it, when it went live to see him there, helmet at all, you know, and it was funny. So I, I I do. I recommend that if you don't know who Peacemaker is, he was one of the people in the last suicide. So it's a continuation right, yeah, yeah, of it. Right from that storyline from the movie suicide squad on um no it is it, it is great it is great so, all right so are you going to be watching ufc tonight what's your, what's your big recommendation other than uh, uh squid game <laughs> dude it's it's hockey season all i watch is nhl there's like there's a game on right now thankfully it's the it's a garbage game i think sabers flyers i want to say so it's a garbage game so not missing much, but yeah, it's, it's Saturday is hockey night in Canada. What do you it think? Is. What do you think? Yeah. So, so what? What is uh? What is your parenting tip this week? Yeah, somebody you know, what? What your step kid come in with COVID? You got your other kid, you know, with. So do you, you? How do you juggle all of these parenting responsibilities? And what one tip would you have? Listen, this week? listen. You know, you know what? You do want. You do want to get to a point where if there's a child still living with you that they don't hate your guts and they at least understand the basics of grocery shopping. Okay. So he didn't know what a broccoli crown is, but you know what? I, the COVID whatever person could stay home and I didn't have to do that stupid delivery thing. I could send the child out and get groceries for me. So that, that is a huge plus. Well, so, so that's just good parenting along the way. Well, just take, take, you know, just take advantage of the fact that, you know, they're going to be driving and all that stuff. I, uh, me, so you know, happy, not happy story. It's fine. But the, 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 the one who got COVID has 
a myriad of medical things he has to he's challenged with now and then. And one of them is his juvenile arthritis. And something right. that really helps him is is treading water and, and saunas and literally hot tubs, you know. Yep. So, you know, he, we got out of quarantine, you know, about a week ago, uh, you know, about four or five days ago. And we went to the Y. He had he was having a really couple rough days with, with, with his hips. So we went. He felt better. And I thought, you know what? This weekend, his mom has to work all weekend. So the three of us will have a guy's, you know, weekend. It would check into like a local hotel that has, they love the, the breakfasts at hotels. Like nothing right, makes right. them happier than making their own waffles. You know, a lot of hotels will have pools, uh, but not saunas or, or not hot tubs. So we found yeah, one yeah. about a half hour away, a holiday in, you know, not, yeah. you know, not. Yep. And, and, and we went and here was the teachable moment the parenting thing dude it was awful like we get there and there's a sign that says like oh the breakfast thing there's a restaurant right down the street because our breakfast thing is going to be closed in the morning and i asked this very nice girl behind the counter i'm like oh well do we get vouchers to go to that restaurant and she looks at me like i'm in here like no why would you get vouchers it's like well part of the deal you know because we looked online and 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 it's like oh when when you do the search it's like just fine you don't have breakfast not the end of the world we get up to the room i don't want to say i think a hooker or a mobster had been killed in that room before maybe quite recently but dude it was it wasn't what i was expecting you know the floor was stained cracks on the wall uh but the real tragedy was like couldn't get Because I said to him, I'm like, you know what? No rules. We're just going to check into a hotel. You guys don't have to worry about your responsibilities this weekend. No guitar, no piano. Your school work's caught up. We'll just have a weekend where we'll sit in the room, eat junk fruit, play video games, and sit in a hot tub. And they were like, great. Um, They couldn't get the systems working. We brought our own TV. you know. So Right, right, right. right. And I do that all the time when I travel because what's that term? I'm a fucking loser. But – so I call down and the same nice girl who answers yeah, says, yeah. oh, I'll send up, you know, the maintenance guy. I'm like, yeah. I don't know if the maintenance guy is going to be able to figure out anything that I wanted. Couldn't get it. Couldn't get working. So I'm like, OK, guys, you know what? We'll figure this out in the morning. Let's go downstairs to the hot tub in the pool. Uh, it was a warm tub at best and the jets didn't work. Ugh. And so we get back up to the room. I call management who made the booking through Expedia and I'm like, yeah, we're leaving, you know? And if, you know, she's like, Oh, okay, well I got the insurance and this. And I'm like, I called Expedia. I'm like, yeah, it's like, you know, the hot tub's not working. The breakfast isn't here. The internet in the room's not working. We're, we're just, ch- and the boys literally were like kind of creeped out by the room and didn't feel safe. So my, parent, <laughs> my parenting tip is like, look, if you don't feel safe somewhere, you leave just, you know, I'm like, if we were on one of our road trips, and I've been driving for like 12 hours. Yeah, this place isn't great, but I'd be like, all right, just push the bureau in front of the door. And let me <laughs> a few hours. I've actually stayed in places where I've moved the furniture in front of the doors or the windows, um, especially when I was in a band and we couldn't afford the nice places when we would stop. Um, yeah, I kind of felt that way where like I was actually um, uh, in earlier in the summer, uh, there was a like a mini reunion among my college friends where I went up to uh uh, Cupertino and on the way back I didn't want to do the full drive all the way down but I, I didn't want to stay that last Saturday night in in the area I wanted to be home by Sunday morning so I said you know what I'm just gonna drive out on Saturday night and then get a hotel midway through blah 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 right so I booked this hotel you know in, in one of those truck stop-ish you know areas knowing full well that yeah I know how this is gonna be and and it was actually kind of scary than I thought it would be but so yeah. I did, I, I you know, yeah. so I, I told them, I'm like, yeah, here's the teachable moment. Here's the parenting tip. You don't feel safe somebody get the fuck out of there. Yeah. You know, I'm like, we, we can, we took us half hour to unplug everything, pack everything. You know, I always coach the boys. It's like, okay, everything's out in the hall. We got the things ready. And one at a time I sent each one. And it's like, do a sweep of the room, check every outlet and make sure you didn't leave this cord there or that cord and look under the bed. It's like, I'm not coming back here. So, and, and we were very nice to the girl on the way out. And I'm not diminishing the fine gentleman who did come up to the room. He tried, he tried his best, but as we're leaving and, and, and look, I'm not saying because you're an IT guy, you want to do, but he was mopping the floor in the lobby. And I'm like, this is a guy they sent up, you know what I mean? And, and then it, 
it hit me and I asked him on the way out. I'm like, is it just the two of you working? It's a five story hotel. It's a holiday inn. It's a yeah. Friday night. Yeah. And when I say like, that's all that was on staff, you know what I mean? I'm like, wow, yeah. that's, uh, and you know, it's not their fault. There was like, you know, they don't have the staff to open the breakfast thing in the morning. Oh. You know, it's it that that's that's a common thread around here. If you see something shut, that's usually why. You know, there's a yeah. 24 hour diner here. There's like one in Nashville, New Hampshire, one in Manchester, New Hampshire. They've been around for like 50 years. It's a family owned thing, and they've been closed. Yep, they've been closed. They, well, not they're not uh, closed all the time, but they close at it, nine o'clock yeah, now. They, yeah, yeah. The 20 well, the late night places have just been destroyed. Like um, one of the things I used. Um, I go when I get the the uh, LA Kings tickets. I often go with um, uh, one of my friends from college, and on the way back, we used to hit uh, Monterey Park, San Gabriel area, which is you know a very much uh, kind of a, a a very heavily Chinese area, so that we could have some you know some you know he doesn't get to eat the exotic foods or you know what I would call food um, as often, <laughs> <laughs> and so. Uh, but the you know the, the place used to have a lot of great late night places and yeah the late night places have all like you know essentially they they close up at like eight or nine or whatever so yeah it's been like that everywhere i think um yeah it's, it's tough so uh we will go out on a song that we've gone out with before it's the first song that my buddy yeah, dan and i've recorded cool in a video. while did you see the video yeah. Yeah, you know, so you know, I didn't watch it when you first. Uh, I so I didn't watch it until like later that night. I said, "Yeah, I'm not gonna send my response at eleven o'clock at night for me." So, but yeah, no, great. You know, night. You know, I didn't. You know, so you've edited, edited that video, is that right? No, no, nope. All I did, all, and it's funny because Dan even put it in the okay uh, on the descriptions. I recorded my drums on my iPhone, and that's okay. that's like honestly, when you hear the drums, it's like it's it sounds like it's unbelievable how good the cameras and the mics are yeah. on something like that, you know, yeah. where, yep. where I didn't mic each drum and go through a level. It's fine. It sounds yep. you know, the song. It's one of those things. Like, like I, I said, and it's true. Dan is the love child of Randy Newman and Kurt Vonnegut. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, and it's such a, it's a, the song's a harsh song. Anyways, the song yeah. is harsh and it's brutal, but the video that he put together, it's like, Oh shit. It just hits like wow. a ton of bricks. So that's an, yeah, that's an amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, and I guess, you know, thank, thank goodness for modern technology too. Right. Like that, you know, right. a lot of this can be done, you know, this way. So. But yeah. I will, uh, I will, uh, I will post that. I will post the, you know, uh, I, and uh, again, apologies for not remembering what the name of the Korean candy slash game is from Squirt Game that the people do yeah. here in my house. Uh, Biff, I hope, I hope your battle with COVID goes, goes yeah. well, my friend. I just want uh, a negative test so I can leave the house again. Wait, you know what? I want to ask that. Like you can test positive for, for a while though, once you've had it, correct? Uh, yeah, it just depends on how much you're, you know, how long you're carrying that viral load, right? So, yeah. Right, that's absolutely. what it is. So, yeah. um, oh, did you get your four free test yet from the, from the I government? I mean, I, I ordered it. I haven't received it yet, but I ordered it. So, I'm going to leave you the last few words. Biff, as always, I wish you the best. Uh, All-Star, thank you for the great heads up on yep. IT. Um, and uh, and you you have the last few words here, well, my friends. <laughs> So, you know, like we started at the you know, top of the show, I, Jock and I, you know, fully vaccinated, fully boosted. And yet we both managed to contract, you know, contract this, you know, this horrible uh, virus. So I, I, I think this is a lesson to all of us. So I think, you know, as you go through your day to day life, uh, don't forget.
Stop.